Good morning from a dark, rainy, stormy autumn day here in Munich. Welcome to this webcast about using Kotlin with Spring Boot in different clouds. Kotlin was initially developed by JetBrains, but there is support for Android development by Google and Pivotal sees it as a first-class citizen for Spring. The Kotlin language is following Java conventions. The semicolon is optional. Package names don't have to match the folder structure. Most control structures are expressions and there is support for mutable and immutable variables. There's also string interpolation and null pointer safety. If you want, you can try Kotlin online. Generating a project based on Spring Boot with Kotlin is super easy. Just go to Spring I.O., select Kotlin, specify your group, your artifact name, and the dependencies. For dependencies, choose Web. Then generate the project. Download the project. Then unzip the project in a directory. If you cd to the directory, you will see that there are some files already created. Start NetBeans. And once NetBeans is running, import the Kotlin Maven project. Drill down to the source directory for the Kotlin sources. And you can see your Spring Boot application that is already generated. Additionally, we want to implement a controller in Kotlin. A controller with three different functions with the name controller.kt. Now the three functions, the first function is just a hello world function that kind of echoes the parameter that we sent to it. The second function returns the time and you can see here how we can use Java util date from Kotlin. The third function will return some environment variable and it's used to show some load balancing magic on ACCS. Then run the Maven build You will see that there are new files being generated and also the Kotlin demo jar file was generated. Now this Kotlin demo jar file we can use and run it locally. To run it locally just type java minus jar and the name of the jar file. Then the built-in Tomcat in Spring Boot is starting up. It's actually listening to ATAT. And now we can try the rest URLs. Try the hello first with your name. See if your name is returned. Let's try the time. Well, not like this. Let's try the time method. Yes, it's working. And then let's see what happens if we try to access the ACCS container, which is null. Now, therefore, we go to the Oracle Cloud. To make the jar file run on the Oracle Cloud, we need a manifest.json file. It's a very small JSON file that basically contains the command how to start the Java application, which is Java minus char. It can contain a node and a release version. Copy the name of the jar file, include it to the command. Save the file. Then 
then let's create a zip file that we can later upload to a CCS. Let's name the zip file demo zip. Then go to Oracle Cloud ACCS. Start the service console, create a new application, select Java SE, give it any name. Select the file to upload, which is under target. It's the demo zip. Select the manifest. Actually, if you wanted, you could include the manifest into the zip file. Here we do it separately. There will be two instances with two gigabyte of memory. Then the deployment is uploading and ACCS is going to start resources and doing its magic. Now let's try the other URLs as we did before. Now running on ACCS. Let's try the hello first, it's working. Then let's go for the time function, which is also working. Now for the info function, we do it differently. We want to run it from the command line. We program a small loop with while true, curl minus s that suppresses the headers. And if we run this loop, you will see that the container name is alternating. There's actually two containers involved and load balancing is working perfectly well. If you want to do the same with AWS Beanstalk, it's actually somehow easier, but there is a challenge in another place. Now to start Beanstalk, define an application name for platform, select Java, and then upload the deployment, the Kotlin demo jar file. Now, the important thing here is that we have to change the configuration. We need to go to software and modify. And then what we need to do is we need to add an environment variable with the name server port and we set it to 5000. This is because internally Beanstalk is listening to 5000 and the load balancer is accepting port 80 and forwarding this to 5000. And since Tomcat, the built-in Tomcat in Spring Boot is normally listening to 8080, we need to change this. Now the environment is booting up for Beanstalk. This takes a little while. It should be running now. We can click on the URL and we can check for the time and you see the time is working. So the port forward forwarding is working perfectly well. And you can also check for the hello application and also the hello application is working brilliantly. So I hope you enjoyed this webcast with Spring, Kotlin and different clouds. Thanks for watching. Let's stay in touch.